Let's go, boy. Hello, I'm Eurogamer's Ian Higton, and this is Base Building for Beginners. Your first attempt at base building in Fallout 4 can be rather intimidating, thanks to the amount of craftable items you can choose from in Fallout 4's workshop menus, and the countless crafting components you find strewn around Boston. So, to help you get up to speed in this video, I'll be sharing some handy tips with you that will be worth bearing in mind as you plan your epic base builds in Fallout 4. Step 1. Choose your location and clear some space. The first area you'll be able to customise in Fallout 4 is called Sanctuary. This is by far the largest settlement that you can customise, and there are plenty of potential building sites for your structures. You just need to clear some of the crap out of the way first. Clearing space is easy, just enter the edit mode, also known as the workshop menu, simply highlight any item you want to scrap and press X or square, or whatever the hell the button would be on the PC. The game will then show you a list of what components the scrapped item will give you. Most of the junk lying around in Sanctuary will give you steel and wood, vital ingredients for building your main structures. This process can get quite tedious, but remember, the more items you scrap, the bigger your builds can be, so it's worth spending a bit of time tidying up the neighbourhood. Step 2. Gather Components If you've given Sanctuary a thorough cleaning, you'll already have quite a few basic base building components. The stuff you'll need to make walls, floors, ceilings and furniture anyway. For more complicated builds like generators, turrets or electronics, you'll need to head out into the wasteland and scavenge for junk. Every item in Fallout 4 can be broken down into components, but each item also weighs a certain amount, so it pays to know what you're looking for, otherwise you'll constantly find yourself over-encumbered. Now, one of the most sought-after components in this game is copper. It's not very abundant, but you'll need a huge amount of it if you plan on adding lights, generators and electronics to your settlements. All these items need copper, and to make them work with each other, you'll also need to connect them with wire, which is another item that requires copper. Thankfully, there is an easy way to find your most wanted components. Just head to a workbench, bring up an item you're missing a component for, and at the bottom of the screen there'll be an option to tag for search. Selecting this will place a magnifying glass next to the name of any item in the game world that holds that missing component. Copper, for instance, can be found in the following items. Fuses, hot plates, vacuum tubes, cooking pots, magnifying glasses, bone cutters, power relay coils, and telephones. If you've successfully tagged copper for search, these items will all be highlighted in the game world, so you can just grab them when you spot them, and you won't have to weigh yourself down with any unnecessary junk. Don't forget to make room in your pockets by regularly transferring your junk into workbenches though. Any workbench will do and they have no limit on storage. They also act like the magical chests in Resident Evil, so anything you store in one will be available to use from any workbench at any settlement. Step 3. Construction now comes the fun part, making something awesome. Head to your chosen building site and open up your workshop menu. You'll see there are eight categories, including structures, furniture and decorations, and each category contains many different items to build. You'll also notice that some things, like the structures in the crafting category, can only be constructed if you have certain perks, so that may be something to bear in mind when you're creating your character. Putting together structures is really easy. The pieces snap together neatly, so constructing a basic square house should be no problem at all. You can choose from pre-built sections or have more control over your builds by placing floors, walls and roofs independently. It's also worth pointing out that stairs are hidden away in the wood structures menu and that there are no metal stairs. The best stairs to use for interior builds, though, are found in the floors section of the wood structures menu. These are the ones here. The other stairs don't snap to things very easily and are mostly used, I presume, for the outside of structures. If you've placed an item that you don't really like and want to remove it, there are three choices available to you. You can easily select it and reposition it, you can scrap it, or you can store it in the workshop for use later down the line. 
If you don't want to reposition the item, I'd suggest storing it in the workshop rather than scrapping it. If you scrap something, you'll get less components back from the item than were initially used to make it. If you store an item instead, it'll sit in your workshop menu ready for use another time, and this way you won't lose any valuable components. Step 4. Power and Electronics Before you start experimenting with power and electronics, make sure you save your game so you can reload if you make an irredeemable mistake or run out of components. You won't get components like copper back if you scrap any electronics you make, and copper runs out really fast, so rather than continually having to run off on scavenging missions, it's best just to reload and start afresh if something doesn't work out right. To build anything that uses electricity, you'll need to go into the power category in your workshop menu. From here, you can build generators, switches, lights, computers, and many other things. We're keeping this tutorial basic though, so I won't be touching on most of the programmable aspects. The first step for adding power to your build will be constructing generators. The jennies come in different shapes and sizes, each one delivering different amounts of electrical output. You can chain generators together with wire to create more power output, and each generator can be attached to powered objects again with wire. You don't have to attach generators to everything that needs electricity though. As you can see here, any light I attach to this section of the house is powered on instantly. And all I've done to achieve this is placed a switch on the wall and connected that to a generator with a wire. Here's another example where with only a couple of generators and switches, I've managed to light the whole ground floor of my house. If you want to get into programming your electronics and making something impressive like this, you'll need to build a few computers first, and probably some pylons as well to help you manage your wires. Chances are you'll also want to build some light boxes as well, so you can spell out a rude word or something. Trouble is, each light box will cost you one piece of copper to build, and each one will also need to be connected to a copper wire to work, so you are going to need to stockpile a massive amount of copper before you can even begin to think about building anything complex. Step 5. Make yourself at home. The final step is to make your base look like a home, and you can do this by adding furniture and decorations. You can interact with anything you place in your home, so you can sleep on beds, store things in cupboards, sit on chairs, or even turn on and listen to the radio. If you've scrapped a load of junk, components for furniture and decorations will probably be readily available, but do remember to make sure you have plenty of cloth stored in your workshop. If you don't, you won't be able to craft any kitten pictures, and that, my friends, would be a terrible shame. Right, so that's pretty much the basics of base building right there. Knowing all this should give you a good foundation to work from as you experiment with more complicated builds. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, feel free to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to Eurogamer for more Fallout 4 videos in the near future. Goodbye and good building. It is often an amazing game. It's an incredibly absorbing game, but it's still got that Bethesda game engine and it's really creaking. And I think anyone who is expecting the move to PS4 and Xbox One to suddenly usher in a new era of stability is probably they need to lower their expectations a bit.